Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. I am ready to discuss book one in the Bloody Mary saga. It's called Mary the Summoning. Spoilers, I really fucking liked it. All right, so you know how I do that thing where I don't want it to end because I'm whatever it is about it i'm liking it too much and i just so i gotta like set it down i think that that's the problem i've been having with focus for the past week while i was reading it like i really love the characters i really love the flow of the story the timeline it like hits the ground running fam all right let's go ahead and go over the synopsis for book one because this is I probably could have had that already set up. Huh? <laughs> fuck it. I said fuck it. There is a right way and a wrong way to summon her. Jess had done the research. Success requires precision. A dark room, a mirror, a candle, salt, and four teenage girls. Each of them, Jess, Shauna, Kitty, and Anna, must link hands, follow the rules, never let go. A thrilling fear spins around the room the first time Jess calls her name. I'm not saying this shit. I'm still not saying this shit. I'm not saying that I believe in Bloody Mary, but I'm not saying that shit three times in a row. I don't, I don't think there's anything... Moving on. A ripple of terror follows when a shadowy silhouette emerges through the fog, a specter trapped behind the mirror. Once is not enough though, at least not for Jess. Mary is called again and again, but when their summoning circle is broken, Bloody Mary slips through the glass with a taste for revenge on her lips. As the girls struggle to escape Mary's wrath, Loyalties are questioned, friendships are torn apart, and lives are forever altered. A haunting trail of clues leads Shauna on a desperate search to uncover the legacy of Mary Worth. What she finds will change everything, but will it be enough to stop Mary and Jess before it's too late? Let me tell you something. Jess has some damn nerve. She has some damn nerve, that adorable little bitch, all right? She's not the main character. <laughs> but she has some damn nerve, and she can kind of kiss my ass. I'm just throwing that out there. Just Maybe you'll like her. Maybe you're not fucking supposed to. I did say she's adorable, though, didn't I? <laughs> so I am giving it a 4.5 out of five stars i really really liked it i love the dialogue i love the way these characters play off of one another how you can be frustrated with someone you love and uh you know at times it kind of reminded me of buffy and like how does joyce not know <laughs> you know what i mean i invited you into my house so you didn't kill that girl of course not did she explode like that man out there she was a slayer mom like what you are Honey, are you sure you're a vampire slayer? I'll take her out of the country. You'll never hear from us again. I bloody well hope. Fine. Get back to the mansion. Make sure Giles is all right. I, I mean, have you tried not being a slayer? Mom. But that freaking Jess, man, she just keeps zigging when she should zag. Fucking rude. This just, like, it's like going from page one. You're just fucking going, right? And it's like... That's how the rest of the book is. Like, you get your moments where... It's because a reader is just like... You know what I mean? You're just like, wait a minute, shit, shit. Like, from page one. <laughs> one thing that I can say about this story is... So I just recently learned that, like, no, just read be a mood reader just let yourself be free do that shit it's been fine it works like a charm for me but like any time that i would be like okay that hour is done this is when i would reach for something else to keep it fresh or whatever i don't know and any time that i would go to like pick up the whispering dead or the unyielding or something like i just 
wanted to finish <laughs> like I just I didn't want to put it down I didn't want like but at the same time I began to ha be at like war with myself because I also didn't want it to end and then I was like oh no my focus it's so bad it's so ugh. like no it wasn't it was just fine I just didn't want it to end <laughs> fair enough so I don't know why I was doing that considering that that's just book one of twos and like This is just apparently how my brain wants to work. Moving on, so. Let me see, I keep saying it starts right from the get-go, so let me go ahead and uh, just read this very beginning with you. How about them apples? I'm not gonna say that they're, they're saying this, the name three times. I'm not gonna do that, so you can read it, okay? When you get the book, you can read that shit. I'm not gonna say it, but Listen, Jess's voice echoed like we were in a cave. Darkness has a way of making everything seem bigger and more claustrophobic at the same time. Four bodies crammed inside Anna Sasaki's basement bathroom meant we were each nudged up against something cold and hard. Jess got the vanity, I got the toilet, Kitty was at the tub, and Anna had the linen closet door. And uh, they say the name three times again. I'm st I still refuse. The lights were off in the windowless room. According to Jess, Bloody Mary had to be summoned by the light of a single candle. Ours flickered on the edge of the sink below the mirror. Though no one moved and I barely breathed, the flame danced a jig on its wick as if held by invisible hands. The whole thing felt eerie. Despite my logical reasoning that the summoning was ridiculous, I'd played blood <clears throat> at slumber parties with these same girls when we were 12. Trying again in high school seemed a waste of time, but there was a strange acceleration to it too. The lure of the unknown. It was a good scare, the kind you got walking through a haunted house, the anticipation was far worse than the reality. I bit my lip and stared at the mirror. Jess claimed there was a right way and a wrong way to summon. <laughs> <laughs> this time we were doing it the right way. Positioning mattered. Salt mattered too because it purified against evil. Water mattered. Hand holding mattered. Even the number of girls mattered. Before, the idea was to scream Mary's name in the dark and scare yourself pretending to see a ghost. This was more deliberate, more believable. This time, it felt like we knew what we were doing. The mirror stayed vacant for at least 30 seconds. I didn't need to look at the shadowed faces beside me to know they were staring as intently as I was. It was so quiet seconds ticked by. The longer we waited for something to appear in the mirror, the less convinced I became it would. The thrill of <laughs> dwindled. There'd been goosebumps on the backs of my arms when Jess first said the name, but now they were gone. A sinking feeling of disappointment rippled around our summoning circle. I was about to ask, are we done yet? When I saw a flash in the mirror. I blinked, sure that it must have been one of our reflections. Then it happened again. A light streaked behind the mirror, a star across the night sky. Kitty's hand flexed inside of mine. She'd seen it too. The mirror filled with fog, like condensation after a hot, steamy shower. But the fog was on the other side, the wrong side. Droplets of water streamed down the glass, cutting black rivulets through the gray. Kitty twitched again, and I clamped my fingers down on hers so she couldn't jerk away. Jess had warned us about breaking the circle. We had to hold position, or we'd be putting ourselves in danger. <laughs> had gotten her name because she liked hanging out with teenage girls. 
To keep her at arm's length, we needed protective wards. The first and most important ward was the handhold. Behind the mirror, the fog changed from a thick paste to a swirling mass of charcoal smoke. My goosebumps returned and my heart beat so hard I thought it would pound through my lungs and splatter on the floor. You don't belong down there. So says me. <clears throat> this couldn't be happening. I try to think of ways Jess could have manipulated the glass, but I checked the mirror before we started. The frame was solid bronze, the mirror far too heavy for a single person to lift. There wasn't space for a movie projector in the room, and Jess didn't have the tech skills anyway. No, this was legitimate ghost activity, and there I stood, witnessing it with my three best friends. Anna murmuring under her breath, Kitty wheezing louder and louder, Jess saying, come on, come on, over and over again. Look, Shauna, look, Jess said. I looked. A black silhouette emerged through the fog, walking toward us down a tunnel that ought not exist. No, not walking, shuddering. There was no fluidity to the movements. It was one jolting, shambling step into the next, like a zombie movie poster. Blood rushed to my face. My toes curled inside my sneakers. <laughs> was real, and she was walking toward the glass. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run away, but I desperately wanted to stay, too. Seriously, fam, I highly recommend it. I'm excited and happy that I have book two already in my possession. But I gotta admit, I don't know when I'm gonna read it. So I don't know when I'm gonna review it, but it will be this year, probably around my birthday, around the end of August. But until then, I'm probably gonna just do my thing and stash it over with 20th century ghosts. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for putting up with my babble again. That was four and a half stars out of five, and I highly recommend. You have a wonderful day, evening, whatever you prefer. And until next time and beyond, you take care, and I will try as well. <laughs>